hyperventilation. Hyper means higher than normal. In this case, hyperventilation can be simply defined as abnormal, rapid, and deep breathing. In normal physiology, a high level of carbon dioxide will trigger breathing. Oxygen will then be inhaled and carbon dioxide will be exhaled. Then we'll have a drop in the level of carbon dioxide, giving us apocarpnia. And that will raise the level of pH, giving us respiratory alkalosis. With apocarpnia, the mechanism just described will be cut off and will be faced with delay in the rate of breathing and possibly a positive state. The effect of hyperventilation will be shortness of breath, fainting or dizziness, headache, lightheadedness, numbness, tingling sensations, muscle spasm, weakness, or confusion. Also, generalized body pain, chest pain, palpitations, otherwise known as tachycardia. Then, we can have dry mouth, bloating, or bashing. Causes. It could be hyperventilation syndrome. I will have a separate presentation on this later on. In this case, the individual will be having spontaneous episodes of hyperventilation, and each episode could last minutes to almost one hour. It will also abate spontaneously as well. We may not have any definitive cause here. It could be idiopathy, but certain conditions could be associated like anxiety, panic attack, or emotional stress. Other causes of hyperventilation could include exercise, and sometimes could be intentional, high altitude, head injury, or even stroke. Could also be as a result of diseases within the lung, like asthma, COPD, pulmonary embolism, or pneumonia. Can be as a result of anemia or ongoing bleeding. Certain medications like street drugs or aspirin could be the culprit. How do we treat? Psychotherapy, behavioral therapy, relaxation techniques, breathing exercise, regular general body exercise, and in the case of anxiety or panic attack, refer appropriately. Hyperventilation could be helpful in the treatment of increased intracranial pressure, but we have to use it for a short time. There's a lot of controversy surrounding its use here. It might be helpful. At the same time, could be harmful when we use it for too long. It's going to bring down the intracranial pressure very fastly. That is useful. It will decrease the level of CO2, giving us apocarpnia and will decrease vasodilation and also increase vasoconstriction. But it will also decrease ribra blood flow. That is harmful. And will decrease ribra blood volume. The decrease of all these factors will lead to decrease in brain tension, giving us increased level of realization within the brain. The neurosurgeons will love to hyperventilate during craniotomy. With that, I've come to the end of this short presentation. Hyperventilation should not be encouraged, but when it is necessary, it could be used in the treatment of increased intracranial pressure for a short time. Long term on hyperventilation can be dangerous. Thanks for listening. Remember to share.